You know, I get a lot of questions on LS camshafts. One of the most popular questions, what happens if I just change the LSA on the cam without changing the lift or duration? Let's find out. In this video, I'm gonna illustrate the change in lobe separation angle by running three different camshafts. Now, all three of the cams share the same lift and the same duration. The only change in the three camshafts is lobe separation angle. Camshaft number one has a 108. Camshaft number two, a 112. And the final cam, camshaft number three, has a 120 degree lobe separation angle. Now originally there's also supposed to be a 116, but we never got that cam tested. So let's find out what a change in just lobe separation angle does to the power curve. The first test in our discussion on lobe separation angle is a comparison I did back when I did the original uh, stock cam test where we tested all the factory LS cams. When I did that, we ran all of the LM7, L, LS1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you, you name it, we, we ran all of them. But this is a comparison actually between the factory LS9 cam, which has a very wide lobe separation angle, and a an aftermarket crane cam. And I picked this because this is the closest combination I had that had basically the same kind of intake duration. And this this uh, crane cam, we'll overlay this first, then we can take a look at this. And as you can see, the crane cam, give you some cam specs here. The crane cam was a 210, 218 duration the 116 LSA, so it's still fairly wide, uh, fairly wide, and 551 lift. So it kind of matched the lift of the LS9 cam. And the LS9 cam, for reference, is a 562 lift, 211, and, but 230 degrees of exhaust duration, and a 122 and a half. It was designed, obviously, for the positive displacement supercharged combinations, and that's why they do that. They extend the, make the, the LSA fairly wide, and they, um, in doing that, they kind of soften the bottom end up, as we can see here, big difference in, in bottom end power. As a matter of fact, all the way up to 6,000 almost between these two cams. But that's because the positive displacement supercharger adds a bunch of immediate boost, even though they use short runners, which I don't like. It'd be nice if they can combine the immediate boost with longer runners. And then actually, I would pick a different cam than that <laughs> without losing all that bottom end. But that's just me. But this is our comparison between a 210 crane cam and the 211 degree duration LS9 cam. As you can see, the LS9 cam is a lot softer down low. As a matter of fact, through most of the curve, um, it's, it loses a substantial amount of torque below, let's say, 5,000 RPM and a lot down low. I mean, down here in the 2,500 to 3,000 range, we're talking about uh, 333 foot-pounds versus 368, so it's like 35 foot-pounds. It's quite a bit. So this is kind of what um, you can expect from a really wide lobe separation angle cam. It tends to shift the power curve up top, although, again, the comparison between these two cams is not ideal because we've changed more than the lobe separation angle. So I know you're thinking, well, we wanna see a test of only the lobe separation angle change. So let's take a look and see what happens on the cam test where I changed only the lobe separation angle. After taking a look at our comparison on the 5.3 with the factory LS9 cam compared to that crane aftermarket cam, um, a lot of people were asking, <laughs> can you guys do a test where you just change the LSA? So I had done this test quite a while ago and what I wanted to do is I asked the guys from Crane to grind me specific cams. What I wanted them to do is grind something that had the same lift and duration and I wanted them just to change the lobe separation angle. So I asked them to do something on a 108 
and a 112 and a 116 and a 120. Unfortunately, I didn't get the 116 and I can only test the 108, the 112 and the 120 cam. But, you know, this should give us a really good idea on what's going on when we just changed the lobe separation angle. So what I did was we had a test motor. I wanted to make sure we had enough test motor to take advantage of the cams. So what I did was put together a stroker. We had a 402, basically 402 inch stroker LS2 version. So it had a four inch crank in it, a 6125 rods, JE pistons, which were flat tops. And we topped that off with a set of uh, GM performance parts, CNC ported LS3 heads. And it had a valve spring upgrade from BTR to work with the camshaft to make sure that we had enough valve spring. And we had a fast LSXR intake manifold, 102 millimeter throttle body. And this was all controlled by the Holley HP. We also had a set of inch and seven eighths Cooks, uh, you know, stainless long tube headers on it. And we ran all of this on, obviously on the Dyno West Tech performance. So first up was our 120 LSA camshaft. So the specs on the cam, to give you an idea, for our 402 were 624 lift, both the intake and the exhaust, 232, 242 duration at 50, and in this particular cam on the graph here, 120 LSA. So equipped with that camshaft, our 402 combination, produced peak power of 570 horsepower and 534.5 foot-pounds of torque. And I wanted to show you a lot of the curve. We were able to run this through a 3,000 RPM spread on the dyno from 3,500 to 6,500. And yes, I know everybody's gonna want me to run it down all the way down to 1,500. Unfortunately, the dyno, the engine dyno won't do that. An engine dyno won't run a sweep from 1,500 RPM to 6,500 RPM. It doesn't have the ability to do that. It can't run that long of a spread. Sometimes we can get maybe 4,000 RPM sweep out of it but usually not any more than that. Because if you do, then the, um, the numbers that you generate at the beginning, at the end of, those, uh, of that span, become inaccurate. The dyno is just, uh, just not able to do that. It's easy to do on a, like on an inertia chassis dyno and stuff, but on an engine dyno, it's, it becomes more and more difficult. But this was our 120 LSA cam. Here's what happened when we changed the camshaft to 112. You can see it did kind of what we would expect, uh, judging by what the cam swap happened in the 5.3, the results that we got on that. The tighter LSA improved the power output, especially down low, by quite a bit. Now we picked up as much as, if we look at the torque curve here, down that 37 or 3800, it went from 474 to 502. So we picked up a lot of torque. And we start to see just a little bit of a change in peak power, although not dramatic. Um, it's not something that I would consider to be, you know, you're talking about four horsepower there. So it's almost nothing. So going to the 112 degree LSA without changing the lift or changing the duration had a dramatic change in what the camshaft does. So <laughs> this is still holding true, just like with the LS9 cam, a wider LSA definitely was losing power down low. So here's what happened when we went from the 112 to the 108, tightened it up quite a bit. Again, no change in lift and duration, 108 LSA. We got another improvement in low speed torque, which we kind of would expect. We picked up, you know, another 11 foot pounds of torque there. But the interesting thing is that we picked up power through most of the curve. I mean, here in the 5,500 RPM range, we picked up you know 550 to 557, so seven or eight foot pounds, and even a little bit out at the very top, which which I found was interesting, based on the change from 1 120 to 108. I kind of expected there to be a loss at the top, but this is why we this is why we test. <laughs> the theory says one thing, but sometimes the dyno tells us something else. Now maybe if well you know I was going to say maybe if we run it all the way out to 7,000 or 7,500 or something on this stroker, which is we'd be way past where it's make, wanting to make power with this particular camshaft, you might see a change. And you also might see a change if we ran this on a smaller displacement, if it was only a 6.0 or a 5.3. So let me know what you guys think. Would this change if we ran these specific camshafts on a smaller displacement? Would we see a difference? I mean, I know it's gonna make peak power at a different RPM, but would the relative differences change? Would the 
with the smaller displacement all of a sudden like the 120 LSA cam or like the 112 or the 108? Let me know what you guys think. But this is kind of typically what we see when we change the LSA. A wide LSA tends to not make as much power down low. Usually it makes a little more power on the top like we see with uh, the LS9 cam test. And the tighter LSA tends to improve power in the mid-range and sometimes through most of the curve like it did here. But what it does do is also hurts idle quality. So if you want something that has the chop, definitely get a tight LSA. And obviously it also makes power. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did you think about our test on lobe separation angle? Now, I know we like to isolate the individual components of the camshaft. So if we change the lift, it always does this. If we change the duration, it always does this. And like this test, if we change the lobe separation angle, it always does this. The problem is, although generalities do exist, so do exceptions. But you know what? That's why I keep testing. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll keep testing.